Hey guys, guess what showed up today? Yep, the ASI Air Mini. So we have one now for this channel and it came at a really good time because I'm building a second rig. And for the price, I, I couldn't resist trying it out because the specs look so good. And honestly, I've been a ASI Air user for quite some time. This is my ASI Air Pro, which I still use. Honestly, this has been so good. I just never had a reason to upgrade to an ASI Air Plus. But for uh, right under $200, there's gotta be something missing from it, right? Well, we're gonna explore that here in a minute. But first, let's, let's unbox this thing, okay? And look at that. Comes with a little pull tab here. That's pretty fancy, ZWO. And speaking of ZWO, I have no affiliation with ZWO. I just bought this because I wanted to. So let's check it out. All right. Here it is in the box. Oh my gosh. ASI Air Mini is mini. It's really small. I'll give you some scale here in a second. So we got some instructions. That's what this looks like. And it's got some nice writing on it. If you want to check it out. That's what it looks like in there. Make astrophotography easy and fun. And let's check out the mini itself. Ooh. Look at that red. And it looks a lot like the ASI Air Pro. It's got those graphics on there. It's got a little dovetail, which is cool. That's what that looks like. And then we have an antenna port here. And the antenna just goes on like this. That's really cool. That's definitely an upgrade from my Pro. My Pro didn't have an antenna. And to give you a little bit of scale on this, how big this is, here is a GoPro 10. And here's the ASI Air Pro. It is just slightly bigger than the GoPro 10. And here's another reference for you. I got a key fob. And here's the ASI Air Mini. And there it is. Look how tiny that is. Oh my gosh. That is so, so tiny. All right, what else do we got in here? We have basically power cables. So these are all power cables. Very much appreciated for these. They're gonna be put to really good use, CWO. So thank you for that. And maybe you're asking yourself, hey, what's the difference, right? Maybe you're in that phase where you don't know if you should get an ASI or Plus over a Mini, right? Because they seem so similar. Well, the one thing I can tell you is the software is exactly the same. So, <laughs> I should mute my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> As I was saying, the software is the same. It has all the cool features on it, you know, like plate solving, plate solving framing, mosaic mode, auto run, video mode, okay? So all the things that you love about the ASI Air Plus and the Pro is in the ASAR, ASI Air Mini. So what's different? Well, let's go down through the specs first on this real quick. And then I'll tell you what's different. So the ASI Air Mini for Wi-Fi uses 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz modes. You also have four 12 volt outputs, which is nice. They're located on each side. That's what this looks like here, maybe. There's one, there's the other. We got a DSLR shutter port here, so you can tr trigger many DSLR and mirrorless cameras. And also what's interesting, and it has a USB-C port here. 
And this USB-C port is dual purpose. You can use it to transfer data, or you can use it to power the ASI Air Mini with, say, a power bank. I think that this is really interesting that you can do that. But just know that if you do use a power bank, you won't be able to run any 12 volt accessories. So that is a trade off. You also get four USB 2.0 ports here on this side. And on this side is the power port. And you see all the status lights here. So the exceptions on this, from what I've found, no ethernet connectivity, it is limited to only 32 gigabytes of eMMC memory, although you can use a USB flash drive, but the ASI Air Plus has 256 gigabytes, no SD card slot, live stacking is also capped at 26 megapixels, although imaging past 26 megapixels, no problem and also no USB 3.0 ports. And since these are USB 2.0 ports, your data transfer speeds from your camera to the ASI Air Mini will be reduced some. But ZWO had called out that we shouldn't notice any significant reduction to writing to the external card here. So we should not notice it. Also, the 12 volt outputs, the way they are on here, instead of just on one side, it may not be conducive to some mounts. So just know that uh, because they're on each side and your power cables might protrude some, might uh, limit you on where you'd be installing this on your rig. Since this has an antenna, let's talk about antennas for a moment. Now, honestly, in the RC hobby, when we get these antennas, we actually just kind of throw them in a drawer somewhere because of the ranges that we are flying at. All right, baby, come back. <laughs> but in the astrophotography hobby, these antennas aren't so bad. And these are for the people that are going to be using this antenna within the 20 meter range of the ASI Air. I do understand that people are using higher gain antennas, but I think that's for people with certain applications. So I just wanna make sure that you guys are using this antenna properly because there is a certain way to use these antennas. All right, let's begin. So ZWO has chosen to include what's called a standard dipole uh, with their ASI Air. And you wanna keep in mind that it has two dead zones on it. And it's actually, both of them are at the poles. So you never want your antenna facing towards you this way or on the opposite end the other way because there is little to no signal coming out of those ends. All the signal in a dipole is 360 degrees around the pole. And you also wanna make sure that your antennas, your receiving and transmitting antennas are in what's called polarization. Now let me tell you what polarization is. So if you have your antenna facing you this way, let's say, you also want your receiving antenna, which in my case is in my Galaxy tablet. And I know from experience that my antenna is actually here at the top. It could be here at the bottom, but the important thing to keep in mind is it is still on the same plane as this antenna. So for instance, they need to be kind of facing each other this way. Could be this way too, it doesn't matter. But as you see, as they're transmitting and receiving together, the signal is actually meeting here. One thing you wanna stay away from is cross polarization. Well, in cross polarization, you will still get reception, but you're only making contact with a small part of the antenna. 
So this is when your antenna is this way and one of the ant other antennas are this way. And you'll see when they meet, it's only on a very small part of that antenna. Like I said, you're gonna get reception, but it's not gonna be the best reception you'd get if both antennas are facing each other in polarization. All right, next thing we need to do is figure out how to mount this little guy to our tripod. And I think I'm gonna have to make something happen. So let's take a look at our tripod. Do you guys hear that? It's totally raining right now. <laughs> It was sunny when I began this video and now it's raining. Gotta love the Pacific Northwest. Anyways, so here is the bolt I'm using on my Skywatcher GTI tripod, right? It's just a regular 3 8 bolt and you can tell I've already 3D printed a knob for it. Here is my tripod and I've never been a big fan of having the ASI Air on my OTA or also on the tripod leg. I've always been a fan of putting it kind of in this area here. It's just really convenient because I have, I don't have just one scope and I have a lot, I'm changing configurations quite a bit and it just helps me when I change configurations. But the thing is, is the ASI Air Mini, I need to make sure the antenna's placement is correct, right? So I'm thinking about using this bolt and then an old skateboard bearing. I don't know if you can see it in here. I have one in here. I'm just going to pop out. It's pretty high quality bearing too. That's a ABEC five. So um, I'll be using that and I've already kind of designed something for it as well. And I'm going to make a finder shoe kind of and using that bearing so it'll rotate and I'm just gonna press fit it on this bolt is the plan for that. So let's print that out and see how that works. Here's my creation. The Skywatcher GTI is just gonna be sitting here on top of this. I have my ASI Air here under the tripod. I don't know if you can see that, but the cool thing is I maintained really smooth movement and I can actually rotate it in any direction. And I can also put that antenna in any position. That way I can maintain good polarization with my tablet. All right, guys, well, that's it for this one. And I think this is a start of a new, should I say, mini series. <laughs> oh God, dude, that was terrible. <laughs> so with that, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.